After studying this module, you shall be able to know how the individual organs are dissected and examined, how the preservation of viscera is being done, and the various protocols required for preservation and dispatch of viscera. Now let's see the first the dissection of individual organs. When we go from top to bottom, it is the oral cavity which is examined first and dissected so that not to miss any significant details. We talk about the oral cavity, the tongue is examined for any disease or deformity or presence of any injury. The buccal mucosa and frenulum are examined for the presence of any significant findings like injury. Inner aspects of the lips as well as gums should be seen thoroughly for the same. Teeth should be examined for presence of any dislocation or associated findings. The pharynx, epiglottis and glottis should be examined thoroughly and presence of foreign body is to be ruled out. And if the jaw cannot be moved due to development of rigor mortis, then the masseter and temporalis muscles are divided above their insertion into the mandible so as to allow the jaw to become mobile. Then after oral cavity, we come on to the neck structures. A large blunt scissor is used to cut open the esophagus from the posterior surface up to the cardiac end of the stomach. Note for the presence of any re-irritative food, capsules, powder, varices, etc. If suspected esophageal varices are present, then the varices should be properly explored and mentioned. Injection of a saline or colored fluid to the varix helps in diagnosing the tear. The larynx, trachea and bronchi are examined by cutting them open in the posterior surface. Presence of any blood, mucus, foreign body, regurgitative particles all are noted down. Then the thyroid and parathyroid glands are removed and examined. Then thyroid, hyoid and required cartilage are thoroughly examined. After that we come, we reach up to the lungs. The lungs are faced with the anterior surface uppermost and the pulmonary arteries are opened using small scissors. They are dissected till the lung tissue as far as the scissors can reach. Presence of any thrombi or emboli etc. is to be thoroughly noticed. The pulmonary vein courses are traced for the presence of any evidence of emboli. Any massive thrombus can completely block the main trunk or can impact any of the branches. So the lungs are then separated from the hilum using a long bladed knife. The long bladed knife is placed with blunt edge upwards under the hilum of each lung and then turned around so that sharp edge is facing upwards. Then with one short sighing movement the hilum is completely cut through. Then the lung is held on the upper surface by the left hand or a sponge and the remaining organ is separated by using a brain knife. Then the organ is inspected for any consolidation, edema, emphysema, atelectasis, etc. Afterwards, we examine heart. Before opening the heart, the pericardium is first cut by giving an inverted T-shaped incision and the pericardial fluid is inspected. The epicardial surface of the heart is inspected for any petechial hemorrhage, fibroid patches, pericarditis, adhesions, etc. The pulmonary arteries are palpated before they are cut for the presence of any thrombus. Similarly, superior and inferior vena cava should be inspected for the presence of any thrombus or emboli. The heart is held at the apex and lifted upwards and the pulmonary vessels superior and inferior vena cava and the ascending aorta are cut as far as possible, as far as away uh, from the base of the heart. It is then opened in the direction of the flow of blood that is the inflow outflow technique with the help of enterotome. The right atrium is cut in between the superior and inferior vena cava and thoroughly inspected for presence of any thrombus or embolus. While opening the right ventricle, the right margin of the heart of the right ventricle faces the dissector. The enterotome is now introduced into the atrium, cuts through the tricuspid orifice and opens the right ventricle along the lateral margin. In opening the pulmonary valve, the heart is placed with apex directed towards the examiner. 
the enterotome is introduced into the right ventricle close to the apex and the conus pulmonalis and pulmonary valve are cut about 10 mm to the right of and parallel to the interventricular septum in the anterior wall of the right ventricle. The incision should extend into the pulmonary tongues and the left pulmonary artery. The contents to be noted whether blood is fluid or red currant jelly like or chicken fat clot type. The left atrium is cut in between the openings of the pulmonary veins. Then the left atrium is cut along its lateral border. The incision extends through the mitral orifice and passes along the lateral margin of the left ventricle up to the apex. The circumference of the mitral valve is measured. Then the incision extends from the apex along the interventricular septum into the aorta, opening the aortic valve. After the blood clots are removed, the heart should be weighed. The muscles of the ventricles are incised in a plane parallel to the board to look for any infarction or fibrosis. Then afterwards, the coronary arteries are examined before opening the heart by making serial cross section along the entire course of the major vessels about 2 to 3 millimeters apart with the help of a scalpel. And this method helps in demonstrating any narrowing of the vessel or any thrombus or atheromatous changes present in the lumen or not. The anterior descending branch of the left coronary artery is the commonest branch to be involved for atheromatous change and plaque and they are usually found just away from its origin. A calcified coronary artery will be difficult to cut by a scalpel and needs to be stripped off. Then coming on to the GIT. The stomach is removed by tying suture at both cardiac and pyloric end by a double ligature. The stomach is cleared of any peritoneal attachments and is cut in between the ligatures at both end and taken out of the cavity in total. The cavity is then exposed by giving a nick in the greater curvature of the stomach and then extending this nick along the whole length of the greater curvature. The mucosal surface is examined whether there is any congestion or erosion or rugi are present or not or whether there is any perforation etc. The stomach contents are taken out and the exact volume is measured. The contents, color, consistency and any characteristic smell present or not are all noted down. And then the intestine should be separated same way as the stomach by tying again the double ligature and by cutting it at the mesenteric margin and then examined separately. Then liver. The liver is separated from all its surrounding attachments and taken out as it is. The surface of the liver examined for presence of any nodules, color, appearance, congestion, injury or any gross pathological finding. Liver is then examined by serial sectioning, gallbladder is to be examined for any calculi present or not and potency of the ducts examined by squeezing the gallbladder and looking for subsequent drainage of the bile through the duct in the second part of the duodenum through ampulla of water. Then the spleen, it is taken out as a whole and examined for its size, shape, any injuries or any pathological changes. Then the kidneys, ureters and urinary bladder. These are the retroperitoneal organs. So they are to be separated, removing the fatty tissue and peritoneal covering. Both the kidneys are taken out separately and firmly held with a sponge with the hilum facing downwards and convex border facing upwards. The capsule is first stripped off using a toothed forcep and is noticed for presence of any adhesions or any pericapsular hemorrhages. They are then dissected longitudinally up to the hilum and examined for any pathology or any hemorrhage etc. Ureters are explored up to the entry till the bladder by splitting them open. The urinary bladder examined for presence of any associated inflammation or any pathology. In males, prostates are examined by pulling out the urinary bladder upwards and dissecting at the urethra and examined for any enlargement or any associated pathology. Then coming on to the genitalia. In case of males, the testes bilaterally are examined and then dissected out by giving longitudinal incisions including epididymis and examined for any associated pathology. 
the penis is examined for circumcision injury any pathology or any associated congenital malformations in case of females the fallopian tubes the ovaries uterus they are freed from the pelvis and its surrounding attachment they are all removed the anterior vaginal wall is then cut below upwards and the cervix is exposed the fornices are examined and uterus is opened from external arch to the fundus the endometrium is exposed by giving two short incisions in the fundus from the main longitudinal incision towards each cornu the ovaries are sectioned longitudinally and are examined for the presence of any pathology in case of presence of fetus the post mortem examination of this fetus has to be done separately along with its age estimation then coming on to the brain which is present in the cranial cavity so after removing the skull cap the underlying cranial cavity is exposed so the first we have to look for any extra dural hemorrhage of any or any allied pathology then the dura is cut along the line of cleavage of the skull and folded back to midline the fox cerebri is freed from the cribriform plate and then fox and dura are pulled backwards the brain is then removed by inserting four fingers of left hand between the frontal lobes and the skull and drawing frontal lobe backwards and cutting the vessels nerves at the base the brain is supported by left hand and the knife is passed into the occipital foramen cutting the cervical cord first cervical nerves and cerebral arteries as far below as possible the right hand then grabs the cerebellum and very slowly the brain is removed from the cranial vault in case of presence of any kind of hemorrhage the blood should be collected and measured the surface and base are examined for any hemorrhage injury contusion or any pathology the condition of the cerebral vessels especially the circula villis it is noted for presence of any aneurysms or atherosclerotic changes the brain is placed in the anatomical position and with a long brain knife two halves of the brain are separated first by a single incision which passes through corpus callosum to the midline pons and medulla the whole of the brain stem is separated by giving on one single incision and then they are sectioned transversely to demonstrate any cerebral hemorrhage the cerebral hemispheres are placed base down on board and serial sections are made in the coronal plane beginning at the frontal pole passing backwards to the occiput at the intervals of 1 cm all the structures including choroid plexus thalamus caudate nucleus they are pointed out and examined properly the fourth ventricle is exposed by cutting along the vermis in the midline with a scalpel this exposes the basal ganglia and the lateral ventricles the third ventricle and tract of aqueduct are exposed the dura is completely stripped off from the base of the skull and associated fracture of the skull is inspected for in case of generalized edema of the brain the cerebral convolutions will be flattened with the obliteration of the sulci and herniation of the inner portions of the temporal poles through the tentorial hiatus and portion of the cerebral lobe through the foramen what is called as coning of the brain fixation of the brain is for complete examination that is required which is fixed by using 10% formalin for one week to facilitate the penetration of the formalin the lateral fissures are opened by using fingertips and this tear opens the pyarachnoid another long sagittal cut is made in the corpus callosum to allow the formalin to pass in the ventricles to keep it in natural form the brain is suspended upside down supported by a string passed under the basal vessels and attaching the ends of the thread to the two sides of the jar then all the individual organs after removing they are to be described under various headings like size shape weight surface consistency cohesion color and structure whether it's a normal anatomical structure or if there is any changes in the structure in the uh, shape or or any of the parameters of the various organs coming on to the preservation of viscera when we have uh, performed the autopsy in uh, in so many cases the viscera needs to be preserved the various indications are when it's a case of evident death due to poisoning or whether it's a case of suspected poisoning either by the police suspects by evaluating the circumstantial evidence or scene of crime 
or by the doctor while conducting the autopsy. In cases of uh, death due to suspended intoxication, suspected intoxication or drug abuse or where the cause of death has not been found or in cases where unusual smell, color or an unidentifiable material is detected in the stomach contents in this advanced stage of decomposition as well and in cases of accidental deaths which involve the driver of the vehicle or a machine operator where this question of alcohol intake or the drug abuse is invariably there. Samples which need to be preserved, there are certain guidelines uh, which needs to be followed for selecting appropriate samples for the viscera or the body fluids or the tissues. They are to be preserved and sealed accordingly and then sent for toxicological analysis to the forensic science laboratories. Before sealing, the multiple incisions are given over each solid organ so as to facilitate the absorption of the preservative. There is a list of that uh, samples of viscera to be preserved. Like routinely we preserve stomach which is preserved whole of the stomach along with the contents. Then intestine approximately 30 centimeters of the initial part along with its contents. And in case of children whole of the small intestine along with it, its content is preserved. Liver 500 grams of liver along with the gallbladder. And in case of children whole of the liver where weight is less than 500 grams. The kidneys, half of each kidneys are preserved, 30 ml of blood should be preserved, a minimum of 10 ml is of course required and urine 30 ml of urine is required. Then additional samples are preserved depending upon case to case. Like in cases of suspected injected poison, the skin along with injection site in and around within a radius of 2.5 cm and similar control sample from the opposite site is to be preserved in plain common salt. Then in case of inhaled poisons, one lung is preserved in nylon bag after the bronchus are being properly tied by a thread. Then in case of cerebral poisons, half of the brain needs to be preserved. In case of spinal poisons, entire length of the spinal cord as well as half of the brain. In case of heavy metal poisons, the nails, the plugged hair, the portions of the long bone all need to be preserved. Then insects and maggots, they are also need to be preserved along with the muscle chunk in case of uh, this uh, entomological studies. Then stained cloth, if, if some staining is there in the wearing apples cloth, they are preserved as such along with the portion of unstained cloth which acts as a control. And in cases of exhumation, the samples of the soil from three levels, namely above the coffin, all around the coffin and below the coffin along with some control sample, they are preserved as such for detection of any heavy metal poisoning. Containers for this preserving all these viscera, they usually use the glass bottles of 1 liter capacity, which are wide mouth with a fitting lid, they are used. The rubber inserts should not be used under caps as it can extract certain poisons like chloroform or chromate. The solid organs are preserved in one jar, the hollow viscera are preserved in a separate jar. The blood is preserved in a third container and fourth jar contains the sample of the preservative used. Two third of the jar should be filled with the contents and upper one third of the jar should be kept free so as to allow the gases of putrefaction to accumulate. The blood should be collected separately in a screw capped bottle. In case of volatile poisons, lungs are preserved separately in a nylon bag. The lungs are tied at the hilum and taken as such and immediately preserved in nylon bags. The polythene bags are avoided for that purpose as volatile poisons may escape from there. The preservative used the commonest is the saturated solution of common salt that is sodium chloride is the commonest because uh, it is very cost effective as well as very easy to prepare. Almost all poisons are preserved in saturated solution of common salt except poisoning from corrosive acids, alkalis, corrosive sublimate and aconite. However, carbolic acid can be preserved in saturated solution of common salt. Rectified is considered to be the ideal preservative with exceptions in cases of alcohol, kerosene, chloroform, ether, chloral hydrate, formic acid, carbolic acid, phosphorus and paraldehyde because organic acids and paraldehyde are soluble in the rectified spirit 
and the phosphorescence of phosphorus are diminished by it. Then 10 milligram per ml of sodium or potassium fluoride and 3 milligram of sodium oxalate is used as a preservative for blood. The fluoride should also be added to urine, cerebrospinal fluid as well as vitreous humor. 1 ml of concentrated hydrochloric acid or 100 milligram of thymol or we can say 1 crystal of thymol or 100 milligram of sodium fluoride can be used for 10 ml of urine as a preservative. Then preservatives are not necessary if the viscera are being analyzed within 24 hours or if the sample is being kept in the refrigerator or ice box. Invariably this situation is not here in, in our country so that is why we have to preserve it. The preservatives are also not needed for hair, bones or nails as well as for lungs in detecting volatile poisons. The viscera should never be preserved in formaldehyde and the same should be used only for histopathology purpose rather than toxicology purpose that always we have to keep it in mind. Then there are certain instructions for preserving the viscera and their dispatch. The solid organs like liver and kidney are preserved in one bottle and hollow viscera like stomach and its contents and intestine and its contents are preserved in another bottle. The blood and urine are preserved separately in separate bottles, preferably screw capped. The stomach and intestine are opened before they are preserved to note the details of the contents. The multiple incisions are given over liver and kidney and these measures are taken to facilitate the absorption of the preservative. The quantity of the preservative should be equal to the viscera bulk. Only two third of the capacity of bottle should be filled to avoid bursting of the cap due to accumulation of gases of putrefaction. The stoppers of the bottle should be well fitted, covered with a piece of cloth and tied with a tape or a string with the ends being sealed. The bottle should be sealed as soon as possible to prevent loss of volatile substances as well as possible contamination. The bottle should be properly labeled with postmortem number, victim's name, age, sex, police reference number, date of autopsy with counter signature and seal of the concerned doctor who has conducted the autopsy. A sample of preservative use should be sealed in a separate bottle, preferably around 30 ml. The sealed bottles are then put in, in a cardboard box which is then again locked. The lock is sealed using personal or departmental seal. Then a copy of the inquest papers, requisition from autopsy surgeon, postmortem report along with authorization from magistrate or the police. The boxes are then handed over to the uh, FSL through the police constable of the concerned police station. The keys for the box and the sample of seal are separately uh, preserved in an envelope and handed over to the police constable. A duly received signature is to be kept from the police constable after handing over the box. Now to summarize this topic, the examination of the individual organs should be done systematically from above downwards in order not to miss any significant details. When you talk about the heart, the coronary arteries are examined before opening the heart by making serial cross sections along the entire course of the major vessels about 2 to 3 millimeters apart by the scalpel. For complete examination of brain, it is fixed in 10 percent of formalin for one week. While handling the medical legal autopsy cases, certain guidelines need to be maintained for selecting appropriate samples of viscera or body fluids or tissues and they are preserved and sealed accordingly and afterwards sent for toxicological analysis. Preservatives are not necessary if the viscera are being analyzed within 24 hours or if the sample is being kept in the refrigerator or ice box. The viscera should never be preserved in formaldehyde and the same should be used only for the histopathology purpose rather than toxicology purpose. However, for the best results, the viscera should be analyzed as early as possible so as to avoid any problem afterwards.